ADHD, or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to me? I got ADHD. It's about anything. It's about everything. It's ADHD. Welcome back to ADHD with me, Travis Mills. Today, I have my friend Gabby Hanna on the show. Thank you so much for coming. No, I'm so happy to be here. This uh, is dope. I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you making the trek. It, the, the trek of like six minutes. Yeah, and you're the first person, I think, to have a latte with me while we do the podcast. Really? Wait, yeah. do you usually have one? I have one every podcast. Are you always doing them at 7 p.m.? No, I've done them in the mornings. I've done them in the afternoon. This was a bad idea, huh? Really? Probably. Oh, I, I love it. I feel like it just like, it just gets the conversation going, mm. you know? No, for sure. Like right now it's great, but then I'm going to go home and be like, oh, I drank a latte. At like one in the morning, you're going to be like, shit, yeah. I had coffee today. But I stay up till like three anyway, so I might as well have energy, right? What are you doing till three in the morning? Dude, I have no fucking idea. Really? It's like, here's my, I always get so tired at like 8 p.m. where I'm like dozing off and I say, just stay up, stay up till 10 and then you'll sleep through the night. But then at 10, I'm so awake. So then I'm awake till three and then I'm doing nothing and then I pretend like I'm going to be productive, but never. Do you wake up early? No. No. <laughs> what time do you wake up? I guess it like depends if I if I'm training, then I do wake up early. But my trainer, I just like kind of walk in whenever I want. So sometimes it's at 10 a.m. and sometimes it's 1 p.m. You and just make up make it up as you go. Well, he doesn't have a like a schedule that he he's just there. He just lives inside of the gym. Pretty much. <laughs> as long as I'm there before his shift is over, I can work out whenever. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's cool. So what are you doing primarily between the hours of like 10 and 3? Are you like a Netflix person? Are you watching like a lot of shows? Yeah, I've been really obsessed with Sugar Rush lately, which Hunter March is actually the host of. I have no of. idea what that is. It's a, a baking show of oh all things. Oh my God. I'm just saying, I've never cared about that stuff. And then I clicked it because I didn't have anything else to watch because I was trying to stay off social media for a couple of weeks. So I was like, well, I can't watch YouTube. And then I started just watching random shows on Netflix and I got sucked into Sugar Rush. Well, I know when we started talking, you're like, yo, I want to do the pod. I'm hopping off social media, you know, so like, let yeah, me know when just you want to do it. Yeah. So does YouTube, that counts as social media? <laughs> That's the social media. Okay, that is like <laughs> the number one, right? Oh yeah. And, I just needed a break. And why did you, yeah, I was going to say, why did you decide to take a break? Uh, besides just the general vein of I'm sucked way too much into this world and being too obsessed with it. It was just a lot of hate videos at the time. Mm. So I would open my phone. It would just be like all the horrible shit about myself. And then I was just not fun anymore. No, <laughs> so not. I stopped watching it. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I use YouTube to learn shit and that is it. Mm. Like when I need to like What fix, are you learning? I, if I need to fix something, if I need to do something on the computer that I don't know, like when I'm in the studio and I want to learn how to do something to like music or something and yeah. I don't know like the, the shortcuts. Do cuts, you produce your shit? Yeah. Some, yeah. I started producing like a year and a half ago. Tight. And I learned on YouTube. Whoa. Like YouTube I wish I could produce everything. that. It was when I watch my producers work, I'm like, wow, you're fucking mine because that is such a cool skill to have. And the amount of creativity for producers, because obviously if you're a writer and you're doing melodies and lyrics, that takes a lot of talent, but producers, I feel like that's a whole other level. So good on you. Well, don't you feel like, ed like you edit your own videos, right? Yeah. Don't you feel like that in, in itself is kind of like production? I feel like like looking at the yeah. grid the same, it's like, you know, you're chopping things, you're putting things in their place. But when you're actually making a beat, the creativity, sometimes my producer will do some shit where she'll just like take the a letter D that I said somewhere and make it go. And I'm like, how did, like who thought of that? Mm. Or she'll just do like, meh, meh, like little sounds in the background that I would never imagine. And sometimes she'll make me sing something and then make my voice sound like a guitar. She just does all this wild shit that I would never think of. Speaking of your music, I saw that you went and sat down with Genius. <laughs> which is a very, it is a very, I just want you to know, okay, it is a very rapper thing to do, to like go yeah. to Genius. When you're, and you've done No Jumper. Yes. It's so fucking cool to me. It's weird how much in the hip hop world I low key am. You No, you're, you're high key <laughs> out here. Um, <laughs> they when, hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so at all. When you're going to these places, like, are you nervous before you sit down? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I got turned into a meme last time, so now- <laughs> And, and I just watched your video of you like reacting to the memes to and the stuff. Memes, yeah. yeah, it was hilarious. Thanks. People were not happy about that. Really? <laughs> yeah. People didn't like that I was laughing at it. Oh, that's so fucking. Yeah, funny. they wanted me to be upset. No. Yeah, but I wasn't. But no, it's it's a little nerve wracking just because. Well, for the monster one, that one was really scary because I wanted to sing it full because 
I d- here's the thing. If I wouldn't have sang it full, then all of the comments would have been, I knew she couldn't sing that way. Mm. Cause everybody says that my tracks are fake and they're like, oh, that's not even her. That's all vocal production. So I wanted to show that I could actually scream that note. Yeah. But then the way that it was edited was no bueno. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, I commend you. I don't think I could ever like sit down and do anything just like acoustic, like by myself. Oh yes, you could. I, t- you know, that is so vulnerable for like, I, I just- You have to be vulnerable to music. You know that. I know, I know. I'm just saying. Where's like, your new music? Shit, on my hard drive. Everyone, that is the, you know what? That is, I put out like this podcast, right? And like, it, it'll do like well. And like all the comments are like, love the podcast. Where's your music? No, really? Where's your music? <laughs> it's on you my hard drive. stuff in a while. I, I I was looking yep. after we did the Beats interview. Oh yeah. And then I was just kind of like digging into what you do. And I was like, oh, he's a musician, but he hasn't put some stuff out, but his old stuff is pretty good. So I my figured- My old stuff's horrible. Um, no, no, no. It's not horrible. It, I would say, I mean, it's definitely dated. It's older. <laughs> like, You know what it's, it's like? I, I, I equate it to like looking through your sixth grade yearbook. Mm-hmm. You know, like your outfit that you chose that day, your hairstyle. It made sense at the time. It made sense at the time. 100%. Um, but you you know, I go back and like, listen, like, look, I love all of, all of those old songs because it allowed me to do really cool shit. Of course. Right. And I wouldn't be, I mean, anywhere that I am now without it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, there comes a, like a point in time where you don't want to like go on stage and sing those songs every, yeah, I played those songs for like six or seven years, you know? Really? Yeah. You know, and I was on tour like seven or eight months out of the year for, you know, so it's, it's kind of nice. Like I think last year I played like two or three shows. Tight. And it was cool. It was like, yeah. fuck, I got, I got to like hang out in my house. Did you play like, any of your new stuff? Um, I did. Yeah. I played at the University of New Orleans. Um, and so I played some unreleased songs, which was cool. Cause I got to kind of people like, so hype. Yeah. Uh, people were drunk and having a great time. <laughs> is it mostly singing or more rappy stuff? Um, so like the older stuff is definitely more hip hop influence. Mm-hmm. I, I just kind of do, I do like a mix of, yeah, yeah. of, Anything I kind of want to do. So what are you waiting for is the question. I what guess. am I waiting? You know what? I'm waiting for a cohesive body of work that Word. I can release and be no singles, extremely though? proud of. I did that in 2017. Uh-huh. I released like five or six songs, um, just like, you know, one-offs. Yeah. And it was really cool. But at the same time, like going back, it's, I don't know. I want like the next thing that I do to be like significant and like important and like impactful. Um, and I feel like that shit takes time. And you know, I'm having so much fun with my Beats One show on mm-hmm. Apple Music and yeah, that's my so podcast tight. and, um, you know, making videos and yeah, just living life. Living life. Yeah. yeah you got you got your toes dipped on a lot of stuff. I'm so a even- renaissance man child. That's what I, I describe <laughs> myself as. <laughs> Album name. <laughs> it's my Instagram bio. Is it? Yeah. That's so funny. I was taking a shower one day and I was like, damn, if you had to describe yourself, what the fuck would you say? And I'm like, well, you're kind of like a renaissance man, but you're not a man. So you're a renaissance. <laughs> you're not like a renaissance boy. You're like a renaissance man child. Yo, that's actually your album title, I hope. You think? <laughs> I hope. That's amazing. When you meet people, what do you introduce? Like when, I mean, you know, in LA, it's kind of inevitable. People are like, what What do you do? What do yeah. you do? Snooze. Um, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on the situation. Uber drivers, I always lie. Don't you hate that? Every time. It's so, or like I, we're, I was getting my, these nails done. Hey. Uh, and <laughs> Love the, the nail lady was like, cause you know, she looks at like my tattoos and shit. She's like, oh, do you do music? And I'm, yeah. And she's like, oh, for fun or like professionally. And that's just where I stop. I'm just like, yeah, I just, I just love music, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's I such just- an awkward question. Cause it, like, I, I would like to say, oh, I'm a musician because that's where my passion lies. That's mm. what I'm working the most on. But then people ask you like, where's your music? And then you have to kind of, people just want you to be famous if you're a musician. Does that make sense? Like if you say you're doing music, people are just like, do you have a song would on I know radio? any songs? Exactly. That's yeah. the number one. <laughs> yeah. that is the num- I got out of a ticket one time though, because of that. A speeding ticket and yeah, I was like, I was driving super fast down La Brea. How fast? You, how do you, you can't drive that fast down no, La Brea. I, going, I know, I was going like 70. Um, on La Brea? What yeah. time was it? Midnight? <laughs> no, it was like 4 like four p.m. No, that makes no sense. There's traffic on La Brea at 4 p.m. You're lying to me. No, I'm really not. And here's the thing. I used to get cars from Chevy. Like Chevy would just like give me cars for like weeks at a time. Whoa. It was pretty tight. That is tight. It was pretty cool. And like the first car they gave me was like an electric car. So it didn't go that fast. Yeah. But then they gave me a Corvette. And I was like. That's wild. They were just like, you're drive this shit. I was like 22 or like 23. And they're like, here's a Corvette. And I was like, oh shit. And so me and my friend were like out in LA, like driving around. And um, we got pulled over and literally the cop asked me, he's like license and registration. 
it wasn't my fucking car because they just like let me right. borrow it. But so how like, does that work? I, I looked in the glove box, right? And I literally had to look at this cop and be like, sir, uh, here's my license. Here's my insurance. This car, I'm borrowing this car. And he's like, well, who are you borrowing from? I'm like, Chevy. <laughs> you know? He's like, well, like why the hell would they just like let right. you have a fucking right. car? Uh, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm a musician, you know? And like, he's yeah. like, okay, like, you know, what song, like, what song do you, and I'm like, well, I actually have a song on the radio right now called Vans On, because t- it was on Power 106 and stuff. Yeah, yeah. His deputy walks over to the other side and makes my homie roll his window down, and he's probably like, like 26, uh-huh. and he takes off his sunglasses. He's like, T-Mills? He's like, Vans On? <laughs> I swear to God, I was like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. It worked. And then the older cop, he actually like shook my hand and was like, hey, man, you guys need to slow the hell down. Didn't write me a ticket um, and let me go. Yo, so if I ever get pulled over in my 2016 Toyota Corolla, I'm going to be like, listen, <laughs> it's not my car. Not- Corolla's letting me drive this. I have a song called Monster. It was a meme. <laughs> a lot of people have seen Look it. it. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> That's incredible. You recently also sat down um, with four. I did, yeah. Which that's a pretty boss fucking move. Yeah, that was that was cool. I uh, I like Tom too a lot. And I had coffee with him uh, like he's a week cool. ago. Yeah. He's a cool guy. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, How, I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, is that like is that just kind of like a reassurance to you that like you know you're you're like in the right direction? You're doing like what you're supposed to be doing with your life. If Forbes is fucking paying attention, I don't attention? know. I mean, obviously, I think it's super cool, but I kind of. I kind of stopped trying to like look at my life like that, if that makes sense, but marking it with sort of accomplishments and stuff like that. Cause I realized none of that super matters. Um, it's definitely exciting. And I was super grateful for the opportunity, but I try not to think too much about it. I feel like it. there's very few things that I can call my parents uh-huh. and my parents will like understand and get excited and about, them, right? Yeah. And like, so like, if you're like, Hey uh, mom, like, you know, I hung out with Trippy Red today. She'd be like, huh? What? You know, but if <laughs> yeah, you're like, yo, uh, I had an interview at Forbes today. They're like, oh, wait, Yeah, you're Forbes? right. I should have flexed on that a little, huh? You, oh, you, you didn't tell anyone? No, not what? really. I don't know. I didn't think about it, but you're right. That that does sound tight as hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I should post that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't post it? No, I might have retweeted it. Oh, my God. Yeah, I think yeah, I retweeted no, you, it. You should definitely do that. I should do that. And cool. I feel like, I feel like, yeah, you should be proud of, like, you should be proud of your accomplishments. Like, look, Thank don't you. be an, you know, ego, man, like, fucking maniac, right? Which you're not, obviously. Who knows? I mean, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Hard to say, would I know like if I was? 10 minutes into this podcast. <laughs> anything could fucking happen. That is true. Um, Ooh, you're getting fancy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said we were going to, like, move around these chairs a lot. They're super comf. Really? <laughs> you did a good job. Yo, by the way, these happened by accident, like, many other things in my life. Um, I just like stumble upon like cool shit. What else have you stumbled upon? Wait, oh is this God. a cool, is this a good story? No, not really. It's just a bunch <laughs> of people hit me up for these chairs and I don't know where, oh, like these, where, they, came where they got them. Cause I was about to have two, uh, I was going to have two Bape chairs in here. Uh-huh. One, Bape? They, yeah. They, it makes chairs? Yeah. They Tight. did a, they did a collab <laughs> with like Modernica um, furniture. Cool. Very uncomfortable chairs, very fucking expensive. This is I, cozy. I could only find one. So that is <gasps> why I didn't get the, you know, obviously I'm not just going to show up with one babe chair. Yeah. Um, that would be disrespectful. So it was a, right? <laughs> if like, I'm like, no, this is my chair. <laughs> yeah. You can take the whatever one. Yeah. Um, but you'd be surprised how many like Instagram DMs and comments I get on the furniture here at ADHD. Yeah, they're super cute. They're probably you know, like living spaces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, living spaces, if you want uh, if you want some, you know, ads on the pod, hit us these up. These are definitely not Ikea qual. No, I don't think so. Yeah, these I are think, up a step. Yeah, these, this is, this might be real leather. Don't say, don't say that online. Yeah, okay. We, we got to take that back. It's probably not really Be careful. It is. <laughs> what do you think about, like, I mean, you've been, you know, documenting your life um, for quite some time. Wait, now. you were going to tell me a really good story about things you found. Oh, shit. Like, just shit I ran in. I ran or did I put you on the spot? And no, just no, no, fun no. Aside kind of, yeah. Uh, not at all. Uh... Oh my God. I feel, oh, this kid right here, my new videographer, Alec, I just randomly found him. I posted Hi. an Instagram story saying uh-huh. that I needed a shooter um, and he hit me up and he's incredible. And I stumbled upon greatness there. Wow. God bless. That's, that's cool. What's right? up, man? <laughs> I like your hair. It's good. It's good. He's blushing now. He's <laughs> blushing now. I'm trying to think of what else, what else happened to me that's pretty random and fucking cool. Um, I feel like even like finding this podcast studio too. Yeah. This is such a good spot. The beautiful, beautiful view. 
I got an ear infection uh, over the break. Oh yeah, I wanted to hear all about your ear for infection. For everyone that's wondering why I'm wearing one headphone and not the other. No, that's just because you're a cool guy. Thanks, <laughs> thanks. We're just recording a song right now. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so over the break, I got really sick. I got bronchitis. Which that's such a bummer. Hasn't happened. Um, and then I thought I had swimmer's ear. And it turns out that I have uh, otitis media, which is a middle ear infection. Love that Spent for you. Spent two years at Harvard um, just to learn. The, <laughs> Wait, did you actually go to Harvard? Definitely not. Um, oh. I did go to Paul Mitchell Hair School, though. I, I That's so cool. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah. That's another fun fact. Dude, Do you you're, hear- the, you're the king of fun facts about yourself. <laughs> you say so many things where I'm like, oh, if you were in a circle and someone said, say a fun fact— you have so many of those. Oh, shit. Um, yeah. So, okay. Do you want to hear about it? A hundred percent. Okay. So I I went to I went to a private school. I got kicked out in the middle of 10th grade. So then that sent me- What did you do? Nothing. It was it was like a religious, it was like a Christian private school. And they and kicked you out? I was wearing like band t-shirts, like secular bands. Like, yeah. Did you not have uniforms? No. No. You were like allowed. Isn't that fucked up? It's like, you're allowed to wear whatever you want, but, really, but not really. you're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just, I fucking hated that place. And yeah, so I just didn't get along with my teachers and my principal. And they're like, look, you can either like stop going here now, or you could just like wait another semester and then like not come back. And I was like, well, if you guys don't want me here, I don't want to be yeah, here. Yeah. What a, that's horrible for a kid's self-esteem. It was awful. Yeah. Um, but you know, molded me into the DIY you know, person. The I, DIY I queen. Mm-hmm. So then I went to charter school and I ended up finishing high school at like 16 and a half. I was going to the community college. Um, and so I got like, so for every college credit I took, it was like double high school credits. Whoa. So I graduated super young and then I was working at Starbucks. And I mean, I, I, at 16 and a half, I was working at like four in the morning. I was like working like the weird shifts, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I'd also work really late and I had already like, I had stretched ears and like I was going to like shows and like wanted tattoos and shit. And um, this girl used to come into my Starbucks and she used to like study there and shit. And like, she like brought her book up to the register and I started flipping through it. And I was like, what is this? She's like, oh, I'm in cosmetology school. And like my hair is all crazy colors and shit. And I was like, dude, I, I could do this. Mm-hmm. So literally like the next day I quit my job and I went and signed up at this cosmetology school. And it was Paul Mitchell? It was a really shitty cosmetology school. I finessed. Oh. I finessed. You gotta be a finesser. So- like the, the state board, they call them state board schools because all they do is get you ready for the state board test. Is that a hair thing? That's like, yeah, that's like what gets you your license um, from the state of California to go and actually work in a salon. So wow. you have to do 1600 hours okay. in school. You have to pass the state board test. Um, those schools really just, like I said, get you ready for the test. Paul Mitchell's really like, it is the Harvard of hair. You know, like you're yeah, going to yeah. learn how to color. You're going to learn how to cut. You're going to learn how to like blow dry. At the first school I went to, I was doing like manicures, facials, like fake nails. I love a male manicurist for real. Really? Like I always get excited when I want to get the guys. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's nice to have a change. <laughs> <laughs> I was awful at it. Don't ask me to do okay. any nails. Well, somebody did yours and they look great. Thank you. Uh, I had to, to kind of help her, help her through the thing. Why? Oh no, I'm just kidding. Oh. I was just like, no, no. <laughs> God, I'm so bad at jokes, man. I have no sense of humor. Really? <laughs> no, I, I hope I do. Oh, I feel, I feel like <laughs> See, you that was a bad joke. <laughs> I feel like I hit with, I hit everybody with dad jokes and it just gets like really, really embarrassing. I'm I'm just like gullible. So a lot of times people will say a joke like, oh yeah, I did this thing. And I'm like, oh my God, really? Yeah. Yeah. Because I just believe you. Yeah. I'm a very trusted person. Yeah. I was going to say, that just speaks (laughs) like, you know, that just speaks on your character. Um, Anyways. So then, yeah, I transfer, I got into some drama there, you know? (gasps) Okay. Dude, I'm, I'm like one of three dudes in a school with like 250 girls. And they were all, the guys were all straight? No. They're gay. I was literally like one of two straight guys there. And you were in, what was the trauma? <laughs> it just got very dramatic <laughs> and I had to leave. <laughs> okay. You're not just going to gloss over that. I'm sorry. Uh, no, I, I I just like, I had a girlfriend there. We broke up and it was just like weird. It was just like, you know, going to like hair school every day with her. Oh my God. You must have been the diamond of the the school because it's all of these fucking girls Riverside California <laughs> I mean yeah it's like a room full of girls and then like just like a good looking guy who also has similar interests as them oh my god that's kind of like the the straight guy on the cheerleading team damn I never thought about that that was you man yeah that was I guess it yeah. was it was weird and then I was like all right well look you know I know that like I wanted to be my own boss and I wanted to be able to have tattoos and I wanted to like no one could like really tell me what the fuck to do. So then I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to quit going to hair school. I took a month off and then I found Paul Mitchell and it was down by the beach and I could like move. And I was like, fuck this. I'm going to do this. Um, You're from California. 
From California. Okay. Yeah. Born and raised. Riverside, you said. Riverside. Right. Desert, orange trees, nothing to do out there. Love meth, that. You know? Did you like, say meth? Meth. It's like yes. one of, <laughs> it's like one of the meth capitals. Have you ever done meth? Meth? Yeah. No. What's the hardest drug you've done? Oh man. I mean, uh, I used to party a lot. What is part is party mean coke? Because <laughs> I feel like anytime somebody says wanna party, it's a coke thing. Really? Right? I guess. I don't know. Maybe I just heard that in a stand-up bit and believed it as truth. <laughs> you want to party? You want to party? Yeah, I thought that was a coke. I went through all my drug phase when I was eighteen, and then I never had. Check this out. I never had anxiety or panic attacks. And the drugs gave un, you until I went through that drug phase, and Whoa. it like rewired my brain. And then I totally stopped. And that was before I got successful in music. Which thank God, because if I went through that phase while like I had a career, yeah, I would have fucked everything up. But you didn't. But I didn't. Yay. I just fucked everything up while I was in hair school and it took That's me okay. like two and a half years to finish. Yeah, but it was supposed to happen because you weren't supposed to be in hair, but you finished hair school? So th walking into like, you know, one of the Wait, things Wait, could you that fucking just, like do my hair right now for I real? I literally could do your hair right like, now. Like well. Like I'm still licensed. I could go work in a salon tomorrow if I wanted to. My mom, cause like every two years you have to renew your cosmetology license. Please do my hair. Uh, <laughs> no, in school they teach you never to do your friend's hair. And Why? never to do your neighbor's hair because- your neighbors. Yeah, because check it out. Like when, you know, you cut like someone's hair, you color someone's hair. Yeah, yeah. The minute that they like, that it starts like looking whatever, they're going to fucking knock on your door or they're like, they're going to call you. That's just what I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if that's true. That's just what my teacher told me in no, hair school. No, 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 no. That, that makes a lot of sense. But I actually feel maybe the opposite because I have friends who are hairstylists and then they do my hair. And I feel like I'm less likely- to complain oh. because I don't want to hurt their feelings. Really? Yeah. Oh, I am, I kind of like, I just need someone to like- cut. Trim me up a little? Yeah, I'm weird. I'll like coach someone through my haircut. Oh. So it's like, it's, it's, I know what I want. I'm very yeah. specific. And I'm like, oh, yo, can you do this here? And, and like, sometimes like people who've never cut my hair before, they're like, wait, what? Like, what do you think of my hair? Do you judge people's hair? No, not at all. I am like the, I am like- I'm clu fucking clueless, right? What a fun fact about yourself. You are a licensed cosmetologist. Licensed cosmetologist. And I started my music project in the closet of like my room while I was in, You're in hair school. You're in the closet? School. No. <laughs> oh my God. Bro. <laughs> See, you can't do the juggling the one headphone thing because it just comes off. No, you're doing I'm a good gonna, job. I'm going to do it like that. Um, no, I started my music project like literally in, in my bedroom like while I was at hair school. And then yeah. the day that I got my, the day that I took my state board test, um, I, I failed it twice, by the way. Love that. Love it. Uh, <laughs> I failed it twice. I went back for the third time. The day that I passed, I went on tour, never did hair again. <laughs> Ever. Like literally. So you're probably not very good. Thank you. Right Thank you. though? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I not mean, look, that's an if, you were like, if you were like, yo, you know, give me an A-line right now, you know, give me like like a, a bob cut or whatever. I would not. I, you couldn't do it. No, I, I just for your sake. Like I would be like, yeah. no, nah, let's not. My hair's a little crunchy right now from my last, my last excursion. I feel like I should have paid attention more in hair school. Cause I that was like, that I was definitely every partying school. and like, just like focus on like music and like, you know, my first show ever Ever. Was that a hair school? No, was that Paul Mitchell. Paul Mitchell literally threw this party for like all the students and I played two songs. That's so sick. And like carried my own little laptop up there, plugged it in with like a shitty aux cord and like grabbed a mic, hit play on my laptop. And like, that was Were my first show. Hype? No, <laughs> <laughs> it was awful. It was awful. It was fucking awful. Yeah, but I, it, I have so many bad performances out there, man. Really? Yeah. Cause like my, my first performance was in front of like 5,000 people at VidCon. Oh and then God. all of my performances have always been at some event like that. And I mean, I can't sing live very well. It's hard. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, people don't realize like, you know, it, you're jumping up and down and you're running across stage and you fucking run out of breath. And everything and just like, sounds different. And yeah. 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 So yeah. your first performance in front of 5,000 people. Yeah. That one, actually, my first performance is probably one of my better ones. But there's a couple out there where... If I ever became a really like famous musician, it would be one of those videos that goes viral and they'd be like, worst vocals of Gabby Hanna and just be this compilation of me really screeching. No, I feel like so many, I feel like so many artists are like that. You just mm. have to learn. I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm learning in front of more people than I should be. <laughs> well, because you already have this platform, yeah, you yeah. know, that you built. And then, you know, yeah, I couldn't imagine playing my first show in front of 5,000 people. I played a show with uh, with Wiz Khalifa Miguel. And How it long was, ago? 
This was in 2013. Where were you? Um, we did like a like a mini tour together. It was like five. So cool. It was like a radio tour. So it was like five shows. Wiz Khalifa was pretty big at that time. He's still, I mean, he's still big. Shout out to no, Wiz. No, but like he was. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying he's not big now. I'm saying he was, he had already blown up at that for point. For sure. And yeah. you know, mind you, like my, like he was my favorite artist. Yeah. Right. And so like meeting him like the first day of the show, like that was when we became friends. That's unreal. Um, and I was so fucking nervous. So like, I'm like, all right, fuck. So like, you know, I go backstage, we meet, you know, before my set and shit. And I'm like, okay, cool. And you know, mind you, by this time, I'm like a touring pro. I have like my sound dude. Right. I got like my stage monitor dude. I got my whole band. So we do sound check and it's, it's like a, an arena, right? So it's like 15,000 people. And right. It's a huge radio show. You only have like a 15 minute set and like those things I can play like three or four songs. So we're like, cool. So we like, you know, show starts. I go out on stage, fucking hyped, you know? And then like, we notice like the crowd is just like standing there, like looking, right? Yeah, yeah. The fucking sound check dude rerouted all of my sound engineers like boards. So we only had sound coming from the stage monitors. So nobody could hear you. The entire fucking arena had no sound out there. They were oh, literally no. hearing like a little shitty thing for like two minutes. And it was the longest two. And like, mind Did you, you, could you tell? I took it on my fucking in-ear and it was just like Silence. quiet. Like you couldn't feel like anything. You couldn't Oof. feel like no eight. Like you couldn't. And literally I looked to the side of the stage and it's like whiz standing there like all of his homies That's tragic. like Miguel and I just had that to was power, your first show with them that was my first show with him and I just had to power through it and like definitely one of the most did they fix it like a minute and a half through the first song boom everything cut on and it was like you know but by then it's like oh my god it a felt weird like vibe. five years you know yeah and everybody's talking about what was that thing that just happened like, Yo, this kid sucks dude get him off the fucking yeah. stage um but yeah th you know thankfully he didn't he didn't judge me oh shit it's ad time it's, it's ad time, yes. baby. My, oh my God. favorite time. Am I a part of this? Because you are genuinely into this ad. You, yeah. Do you want to be, you want to be a part of this? I'd love to be a part of this. Cool. Um, <laughs> um, today's ad on ADHD is brought to you by Audible, which I, I truly love Audible. I know you were talking about it off camera and that's how you know it's real. Yeah. I'm listening to two books on Audible right now, simultaneously. One while you're running, one while you're driving. Yep. It's um, the honest truth. The one while I'm running is called Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Uh, and then the one while I'm driving is called Negotiate As If Your Life Depended On It. Whoa, you listen to business books. Yeah. Am I ruining your ad read? I'm sorry. No, no, no. I haven't even started. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> um, you know, well, with Audible, you get access access to an unbeatable selection of audiobooks, including bestsellers, motivation, mysteries, thrillers, thrillers, memoirs, and more. Fillers and thrillers? Fillers, thrillers, and more. Whoa. Wow. Uh, Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet, and now with Audible Originals, the selection has gotten even more custom with content made for members. Um, you can choose three titles every single month, one audiobook, and two Audible Originals you can't hear anywhere else. Audible members also get access to exclusive audio fitness programs to start the new year off on the right foot. I should probably look into that since I'm I'm reading and listening while yeah. I run. Yo, wait, Audible has originals like Netflix? I, I think so. Like exclusive books for Audible? You, you can get exclusive Audibles. You better sign up. Uh, you can listen on any device at any time, anywhere. You can listen at home, at the gym, on your commute, uh, or just on the go. You'll also enjoy easy audiobook exchanges, rollover credits, and an audiobook library you keep forever, even if you cancel. What's cool is like, I get a certain amount of credits every month, and if I don't read enough books... They just roll over to the next month. And then yes. when I'm feeling real studious and smart, I just go on like a downloading binge. Love that. Um, and it's really dope. Uh, you can go to audible.com slash audible. No, audible.com slash ADHD. Nailed it. Uh, or text an SMS code ADHD to 500500 and listen for a change. Once again, go to audible.com slash ADHD or you can text ADHD to 500500 and listen for a change. Audible, I love you. If you want to send me all of the credits so I can read all of the books, <laughs> you should do that. Tight. <laughs> I just feel smarter when I when I listen. You know? Really? Yeah. I can get I can get I can get more done. Yeah, I've never um I like the books that I've read on Audible have never been like like stories, if that makes sense. Okay. Like I usually listen to like some like uh like the business type of instructional things. Mm. And I tried listening to like a story one once, but I feel like 
I need to give that a go. Because like, it'd be like a podcast, right? Yeah. Or it'd be like watching, or it'd be like listening to a movie. Dude, that's what I do with like Grey's Anatomy because the actual scenes gross me out a lot, but I love the stories. So I just, while I'm working, drawing or something, I'll listen to the shows. Really? Yeah. Cause the gore really gets me. Like when they hung, they hang up intestines and stuff. And it's just a little bit much for me. My mom, um, she went to nursing school when I was like 10 to like 13 and I used to help her study and shit. And she used to have to watch these crazy, <laughs> crazy videos. Noest of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, same. And I'm like a 13 year old kid. Right. And like, you'd think I'd be like all in like blood and guts. No, is that a 13 year old kid thing to do? <laughs> I don't know. I was playing like Grand Theft Auto and like skateboarding. I, those are not mutually exclusive. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying like, like, I grew up like just like bashing my knees and like bleeding every, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. just like doing like, I don't know. Yo, weird did you shit. know that when they do a C-section, they take all your organs out and put them back in? No. <laughs> Dude, it's so fucked. <laughs> like they cut you open and then they take out your shit and they put it in a bowl on ice. You're lying. I swear. And then they take the baby out and then they just put the organs back in all willy nilly no. and sew it up. No. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Oh my God. That's so wild. So like when you're getting a C-section for a hot minute, you don't have organs. What? Yeah. <laughs> don't you have like intestines that- Go. Well, they don't take out all the organs, but okay. Here's another thing. <laughs> don't you imagine your body parts were all kind of connected? Yes. Like, like with tubes. Yes. Dude, they're not. They're just chilling. Like for real. They just so, take that. Did you? Okay. Did you ever watch like a? Heart yo, there's gonna be some doctors or like some nurses that are listening to this getting so pissed no, off. No, I literally talked to a doc, you know Doctor Mike. <laughs> okay. He does YouTube. But oh yeah, 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 yeah. He was tweeting me about it because I was so stressed out about it. But if, if you get a uh, let's say a kidney transplant, they literally just take it out of one person and place it in another person and then sew you up. Your organs are just chilling. Wait, but doesn't it fill? Is it? Oh, that's your liver, huh? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you went I, from like expert to just like, nah, I don't know. No, but I don't think your liver's tapped to, like to be either. It's just chilling. Damn. I, I never, know. I never knew that. You know what's crazy? I mean, because like my ear thing, right? So your ear, your nose and your throat are all connected. Yeah. So like what start? you know, I got sick and then my throat started hurting. When you said ear, nose and throat, I, I was like, <laughs> I feel like I need to sniff. I wish I could do that. <laughs> what, sniff? <laughs> no, just like, yeah, I just have fucked up sinuses. Me too. It's just from like, you know, years of just abusing my, my voice. Oh, well. um, yeah. Just get chronic sinus infections. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sexy. Um, but on uh, like, yeah, in two days, I'm gonna have to go back because I got this amazing doctor now and he's gonna have to put tubes in my ears. Mm -hmm. So he's gonna have to take something and like go through my eardrum. And, Wait, like, is that does I don't understand. They're gonna put like a like tubes. In it's my gotta ears. be little, right? I think yeah. Because you're not even supposed to put a Q-tip in there. No, no, no. Which no. I They're going to like penetrate my shit so that my ear. <laughs> so like like the like they can because I learned I learned this term. It's called your eustachian tubes. Oh, my shits are fucked up. <laughs> my eustachian tubes are not good. Is that like the ear hole? It's like yeah. It's like the tubes that connect your ears and everything. And it like you know they're supposed to like drain and all this stuff so you don't get sick. But mine are like you know. I'll, I don't know. They're all messed up. Did you ever have the doctor put the thing down your throat to look at your vocal cord? He just did that like literally yesterday. And, and you had to sing while it, it was in there? No, but he had to go ah. And then he took this like long needle thing, like very thin needle and like put it up each one of my nostrils. A needle or like a camera? To like scrape, no, to like oh, scrape stuff and then like send it back oh. to get tested. Oh no, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna break it. That shit was awful. It, I like it. I, started, I had to do that to my cervix once. Oh, what? <laughs> Girls have to get their cervix scraped sometimes. By the OBGYN, right? Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> it's not comfortable. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine. But I'm really scared for the little- Nah, you'll be all the right. The tubes. You'll be fine. It's just, it, yeah, it's weird. Yo, how much do your vocal cords look like a vagina though for real? Very, very much so. It's wild. I can't believe that's not a vagina. <laughs> It's almost like God like ran out of blueprints. He's like, yeah, we'll just throw this in here. He's just repeating shit. Yeah. It does the same shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what if you could sing with your vagina? It's like, so, there's someone out here with like a mix. It's just, that's just like flop. It's like flip flop. This you know combo what I mean? took a turn for sure. Yeah, we're definitely getting uh, demonetized on YouTube. Sorry about that. <laughs>
Nah, you'd have to watch a lot of video get to, to get to the vagina comment. <laughs> oh my God. That's true. That's yeah. true. Um, are or you does, a fan? Does YouTube pick up the word vagina and it's whatever algorithm? We're going like, to find out. I guess. We are Let me know. To. What do you think about the algorithm and like everything, how YouTube's changed? Because you've been on the platform for a while. And I try not to pay attention. I'm really? so boring to talk to about YouTube because I post my video and then I disappear for a week and then I post another video. That's disappear. good though. Because I feel like a lot of people post and like just sit there and refresh and like see uh, how many likes do and do all that shit. Nope. I'm too crazy. I can't do it. I, I'm so extreme. I either am completely obsessed and involved or I'm completely detached. I can't ever find it's one a happy or the meeting. other. Yeah, I'm not a very balanced person. <laughs> I'm working on it. Did you have any New Year's resolutions? Yeah, but mostly like career wise, the direction I'm taking, but I'm also uh, one of my New Year's resolutions is to really detach myself from like comments on what people think about you because I feel like. I'm kind of reaching a point where it's so much picking a part of everything that I just need to really not read shit and stay in my lane and be a human again. Cause well, you know what's crazy is like you read these comments, right? And like they fucking, I mean, it's, someone can say the right thing that just really fucking gets to you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's crazy to think about who's actually typing these things because yeah. I guarantee you 99% of the time, it's somebody like 15 or 16 yeah. who lives with their parents. Yeah. Who like stays in their room, who mm -hmm. isn't happy. Yeah. Well, no, just, no, they're never happy. Exactly. Yeah. And they just want to like tear. And so like when I think of it like that, I'm like, oh, like it, it doesn't, it doesn't really mean as much. You know, I can almost yeah. laugh about it because that shit used to bother me too. Yeah. It's hard not to when I, it's like you said, like the one person can say one thing that'll just trigger you in a way where you feel like you need to respond. But somebody said something so personal about like my family life at one mm. point that like shit like that, like that sent me over the edge. But Definitely. as far as like, you're fat, you're ugly. Actually, no, recently, maybe a few months ago, I had put on some weight and I, you know, I like went through this whole fitness journey where I lost so much weight. And then I put on some weight and I posted a dance video and somebody commented like, damn, she's like really gaining weight. And that was the first time somebody had commented on my weight since my body transformation. And that really upset me because I, I was already in so, so insecure about gaining weight. So that shit still gets you, but like, they're like, you're ugly. <laughs> Who cares? You know? For sure. I've definitely just, I mean, I don't know. I, I used to just get so mad and just like, it, it just like want to like respond to everybody. Yeah. Can't do that. No, you can't. You learned. I got, uh, <laughs> you learned. <laughs> <laughs> you learned. Yeah. Sometimes it's hard not to, and I've done it for sure. Like I actually did it recently. Well, no, actually I did it in like August, but people are talking about it recently. Look, some clapbacks are necessary and they're entertaining. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like sometimes yeah. they're, they're well-deserved <laughs> and you just gotta, you just gotta like, let no, but it this go. one wasn't even entertaining. It was just like the girl, like really hurt my feelings mm. and I like responded and I shouldn't have. And then sometimes yeah. too, when you respond, the comment that they'll reply with is, oh my God, so sorry. Like, I love you. You know, just wanted to- Yeah, <laughs> they yeah just that one's attention. always interesting. Yeah, because it's kind of like the the whole, like the boss yells at this guy and then the guy comes home and he yells at his kids or he yells at his wife and then the wife gets upset and then she yells at her kids and the kids are upset and they kick the dog. And it's just this domino effect of anger. And then people, when they receive anger, need to put it somewhere because energy doesn't die. It's just a- you know, ongoing thing. It needs to go somewhere. So those little kids who are, or adults who are leaving hate comments just are probably receiving hate somewhere else. Mm. It sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Change of topics. Did you watch Bird Box over the break? Yeah, I was actually, <laughs> when you were talking about Audible, I was just like, I wonder what the Bird Box of Audible <laughs> is. <laughs> I got uh, a comment on my Instagram the other day and all it said was, um, I have the entire script of Bird Box in my Instagram bio. So- I went to their profile. Okay. And sure enough, the fucking word for Wait, word. Wait, was it a link? No. They literally copied every sync, like every line. It fit into the bio? Into their Instagram bio. Hold on. Yes. How? I think they had like an, un oh, was, you couldn't click it though. But I'm saying, I swear like to God. Like you went to their page and it was just I went script? to their page and like the thing before, like their actual thing, it was just text and text and text and text. And I literally followed it along with the movie. And I was like- Wait, how did they do that? I don't know. There's a character limit and there's something Can you do it here. with a URL though? Like a link? Cause maybe that was that. I have no idea. I'm saying this shit was gigantic and it was incredible. I'd love for you to find a screenshot of that. I, that very I, yo, if you were the person that left the comment on my Instagram that said you have the entire bird box uh, in your script in your bio, please let me know. Did you like it? I did. I was like, okay, first of all, 
how much time did you spend to one, find the script, right? And then two, like copy everything. No, I meant the movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed the Instagram yeah, bio. I love but the, the movie. Instagram bio. Uh, the movie, uh, no, the movie was cool. You know what? One thing that I really liked is I liked that you didn't see um, the monsters. Yeah, that was cool. We're not going to do Leave no spoilers it up to here. Yeah, yeah. Um, there were some things that were like were kind of left open ended, and I was like, "What the fuck? Like, what what happened here?" Yeah, I just guessed the ending pretty quickly. Um, did you guess it? Yep. Yeah, it's it's kind of in your face a little bit. Um, but I, I also am kind of iconic at guessing the endings of the movies. Wait, the Pikachu movie's not out yet, right? No. Okay, on record, his dad is 100% Ash Ketchum. There's no way. Pikachu's Have you seen the dad? No, no, no. The kid in the movie, his oh, dad okay. is Ash Ketchum. Okay. If he's not, I will eat my foot. <laughs> but that has to be it. Damn, I'm almost like, yeah, it's like, it's not as fun for me when I think I know the ending. Do you know what I mean? I, I can yeah. get to things very fast and I'm like, oh, Bro, this I'm is- so fucking annoying to watch. Don't ever watch a movie with me because <laughs> the whole time, like, cause I want people to know that I know. I'm like, okay, this is what's gonna happen. You'll see. And then it does. How many times are you wrong? Rarely. Rarely? Very rarely. Unless it's like a really bad movie. Like I just, actually, I'm not gonna say the movie. I feel like now that I'm sort of in the public eye, I can't give my opinions on movies. Really? And like music. Yeah, just because like, what if the guy who produced the movie or- is in the movie sees it and now that person hates me and I burn a bridge in Hollywood. Does mm. that make sense? I had a I had a director meeting and uh I went to this director's house for this role and we were talking about like music and stuff and um <laughs> this fool like dissed <laughs> one of my like best friends. Did you say this fool? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just such a funny thing to refer to somebody as. Oh, I mean, like, yeah, you know, this fool, he like dissed one of my best friends. And he's like, he's like, oh my God. Who's your best he, friend? Uh, well, he, he passed, um, his little peep. Um, and he dissed them no, after? What he, no, no, it was be, it was before he passed. Oh, okay. Um, but he was talking, he was more talking about his music. And that was the thing that I loved about peep is he was like so polarizing and it was like people either loved him or hated him. Right. And, um, that was something I really respected about him because he just didn't really give a fuck. Yeah. But this dude was like, um, you know, I want him to look like this, you know, but, oh, but, but not like this kid. I'm like, oh, that's, that's like my best friend. And like, yeah. just even saying that, like his whole face and like his whole demeanor, change shifts shifts and yeah. like it went from like you know when you're walking into like a direction i don't know you don't you don't hold the cards right like you're like yeah. going there and like it's just weird how that dynamic shift and like the rest of that meeting he was trying to like prove to me like how cool he was you know yeah. like how he like got it and he's like oh, oh but but you know yeah um, it's also that was risky in the first place though because what if you were just a big fan and you're just like oh well then you don't have the same vision as me type thing you exactly. know what i mean yeah not smart he probably doesn't care Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> it's LA, you know? Yeah. People like, I used to say, uh, I used to be really insecure in LA because like everyone's so beautiful and it's hard, it's easy to be insecure here. But then Where I realized Pennsylvania. Okay. But I realized everybody's so obsessed with themselves that nobody's looking at me. And then I stopped being insecure. Damn. <laughs> it's true though. Like nobody gives a fuck what I look like. Cause they're not looking at me. Damn. They're looking at the reflections in the windows. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> It's kind of true though, right? It kind of is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That is so true. Me just generally dissing LA. Don't hate me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> There's like a group of angry people outside the podcast building. Yeah. Like people who felt a little too triggered. Like I look at myself in the reflection. <laughs> she I'm definitely me? guilty of that. And now I'm just scared of two-way mirrors. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really afraid of two-way mirrors. <laughs> Yeah. You know, because it's That's like, you know, what if I'm like doing, I don't know. What if I got to like, I'm sweaty. You Yo, know? Is there anyone that can Google if there's a phobia for, of two way mirrors, like know. an actual, like, Oh he, yeah. Right here. Mirror phobia. Hannah Cranston. I don't know who that is. Is that a Brian? Mirror phobia. No, no, no. Two way mirror phobia. No. Wait. Oh, spectrophobia. Hold on. Uh, okay, you got to get that image away from me because it's really freaking me the fuck out. Please it's a kind of specific for involving a morbid fear of mirrors, sometimes related to the fear of ghosts or, or the unhood. Did you ever do Bloody Mary when you were a kid? Too scared. Really? Couldn't do it. Damn, I did that shit a bunch. No, no, no. Ouija boards, Bloody Mary, Candyman, like get all that shit out of my oh, life. Oh, Candyman. I, I forgot about that shit. Not interested. Really? Yeah, do you like no. horror movies? Nope. <laughs> you can't do it. It's so weird. I feel like this is the third time I've had this conversation in like two days. People keep asking me if I like horror movies and the answer is fucking no. I don't want to watch them. I don't like being scared. I'm so jumpy and anxious. If you say boo, I'm going to jump. I don't like them. Do you, So you're not going to like not scary farm or like universal Fuck Halloween. No. You know how many boys during like, th or like uh, Halloween want to go on a date to a horror movie? I'm like, no, you will never be attracted to me again because you will watch me cry 
pee myself a little and I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna enjoy myself because I'm gonna have my eyes closed the entire time. Like at uh, Universal, they have the Saw yeah. haunted house. Why the fuck would you go in there? I do all of them. No, yeah. that's yeah. not a good time. <laughs> that's horrifying. I don't want to see your bloody pig head. Get the fuck out of my life. I literally do laugh. Do you swear on your podcast? Yeah, you can say whatever that's you want. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I literally like laugh the whole time I'm going through that. Well, congratulations. I don't enjoy it. I walked into the entrance. It was the entrance of Universal and I fell to the floor and peed myself because one of the guys on stilts came down and s- pretended to slash me with something. I'm not interested. What if a real murderer is in there? That is a, a good horror movie. Guess what happened the other day? What? I got so dramatic. I went to go see this movie, um, Escape Room. That I was literally just about, okay, so that was what I was talking about. That's they the just movie came I was talking about too yeah, when okay. I said I didn't want to talk about the movie because I don't want to burn any bridges. Oh, got it. <laughs> no, but uh, so- We, before we went into it, this kid that I went to this movie theater went, said, uh, did you see that story in Poland today? In an actual escape room, five people died in a fire in Poland because they were in an escape room and it went wrong. And they couldn't get out? Yeah, and they died. And then we start watching the movie and right away in the beginning, not a spoiler because it's the beginning of the movie, but they like read this article and it's like five people die in a fire from a failed escape room. And like the plot at the beginning of the movie happened in real life in Poland. Ugh. That's eerie. That's really scary. Yeah. And now I don't want to go to escape rooms. Yeah. I went to one where I had to get into a coffin <gasps> and no, like go like rolled out into like a different thing. And it was that was pretty traumatizing. That's super spooked. That sounds like a twisted version of uh wait, what's no vacancy? Oh yeah, oh the, the bar oh, or whatever. You, yeah, like yeah. when you get on the bed and it like or is that what happens at no vacancy? Is that that one? Oh, you know, I'm thinking of um You're thinking of Davy Wayne of adults only. The one that looks like a porn shop when you walk in? Oh, no. I love that one, though. It's kind of boring inside, but it's a fun theme. It's fun to walk through the porn shop. It's fun to walk through the porn shop, and then it's just sort of like a weirdly set up bar. But um, that one's fun. And then I love Davy Wayne's. That's like my favorite bar of all time. I think I've been there. You've never been to Davy's? It's uh, called Good Times at Davy Wayne's. You walk through a refrigerator, and then once you get inside, the main part's a living room, and everything's set up like a house. So it's like a living room. The kitchen is the bar. The outside area is so nice, and the food is so good. Good time. You should give it a go. Davy Wayne's is sponsoring the podcast now. <laughs> right. uh, if you want to use code ADHD <laughs> <laughs> at checkout, get ten percent off your meal. No, you won't. Uh, <laughs> you will not. I feel like LA has a bunch of those like kind of weird. There's a Michi. store, this clothing store called Bodega, um, and it's in downtown. And you gotta like go through this like parking lot, and it literally looks like a bodega. Like you walk in, and there's like like cases I of don't like. Know what a bodega is. Oh, you don't? It's like <laughs> it's like a it's like like a liquor mart. It's like a kind of like a liquor store. What? On the East Coast. I've never heard. See, I'm from the East Coast. I've never heard that word. You walk in and like it looks like you're walking into a freezer. And they got like it like literally looks like a stock room. Like they got like water bottle cases and like, you know, Coke cases and like Whoa. bananas. And then like, yeah. It's like, called a bodega? Bodega. It's a clothing store too. They got one in Boston as well. That's like the first one I went to. But a bodega is it like a freezer? No, no, no. It's like uh, you go in there and you can buy. I mean, you can buy like cigarettes. You can buy like milk. You can like buy a like mini ice cream. <laughs> no, no. Think like of a, like think a of like a store? ghetto Seven <laughs> Eleven, like an unfranchised Seven Eleven. So a mini mart. Yeah. Oh, I thought you said a mini bar. Oh, no, no, no. Mini bar. Oh, I was like, no, yeah. not a mini bar. Are you a mini bar guy? Mini bar guy? Yeah. No, I, the only thing I'll drink is beer now and a little bit of gin. Um, no, but I mean like when you're in a hotel, do you do the mini bar? No. I won't do it. Yeah, no. Like when people just like pull out those little liquor bottles, I'm like, oh. The little ones? Yeah. It's so weird. You're wasting so much money. <laughs> it makes me so mad. <laughs> that's what you think about? <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. I'm just like, God, it's like $12. Why don't you just go get a bottle? <laughs> <laughs> the worst is like the water bottles in the hotel room because it's like 20 bucks for a bottle of water. Yeah, that's annoying. And then I just walk my ass to 7-Eleven and like get everything. Yeah. I'll never not want to not waste money. Does that make sense? I hate wasting money. I am the same way, except I'll waste money on the weirdest things. Like, like Postmates. No, that's not wasteful. That's convenient. Which I guess a mini bar is too, but that's a little extreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, okay. Okay. But I'm just like, damn, I could just like be not lazy and go get it myself. For sure. But that's a lot of time and effort. <laughs> I, I'm a big Postmates advocate. Use my code. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> I think it's just Gabby with an I eat. No, I'm just kidding. I actually don't know my Postmates code, but it, it is very convenient. Like if you're in like a studio session and you're hungry. For something like perfect. that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I just like, yeah, I looked at uh, like, you know, cause 2018 is over. Yeah. So, you know, I had to go have those, those dreaded financial meetings. Yikes. 
And uh, yikes.com. You know, that's like when, you know, your people show you what you spent your money on that year. Yo, I don't spend money. Ooh. Like my business managers like get kind of like annoyed with me. Really? Yeah. Cause they're like, like, yo, go uh, buy yourself something. Yeah. Cause they're like, you're just like spending so much in taxes, which I would be spending in taxes anyway, but you, you know, tax write-offs work or whatever, but they're just like spend more. But it's weird because all year they're like, oh my God, you're such a good client because you, you're so good at saving your money. And then at the end of the year, they're just like, you hey, write this fat money. check to the IRS. Look, I wanted, I yelled at my business manager because I was so upset. <laughs> she like told me and I was like, what did you do? <laughs> And then she had somebody else call me and they were explaining to me. I was like, this You think is they're normal. like stealing from, you think like her and the IRS are like in cahoots? No, together? I just, I just like was shocked. <laughs> I was shocked and upset. It's, I know I called my mom and my dad and I was just like, damn, this sucks. I didn't call anyone because it's like a horrible thing to complain about. It's like, I made so much money. No. I, my taxes are so high because I'm so rich. I, didn't mean, I, didn't, I don't mean like that. I mean like, I meant like, like, yo, what the fuck? Like, is this normal? Like, does everybody yeah. have to do this? No, I asked my uncle because he's super like successful. So he kind of understands like taxes. And he was just like, welcome to America where um, you're the most punished person, which is like a single young adult who's working hard and being successful and you are punished for it. And welcome to America. I know you got nothing to, you got nothing to show for it. Pretty much. Oh, um, No. Still My whole thing was like, how long can I hold out from paying this before I go to jail? It's just like, I mean, I just try to tell myself, like, it's nice that we have firemen. <laughs> And then I get like less sad about it. For you to look at or to put out fires? No, to like put out fires. Because when you, when you think about what tax money is used for, you're like, okay, this makes sense. Somebody has to pay firemen. For sure, for Some sure. people has to pay, have to pay teachers. And then I get less upset. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I just feel like, you know, now I, I just feel like I kind of- We sound like bad people right oh, Horrible now. people. Okay. Yeah. The comments below this <laughs> are so going to be like, know. fuck you guys. <laughs> right, right, right. Fuck you guys. Yeah, but even when I was making not that much money, taxes suck. Because it's so much of your paycheck. And you're See, like, I didn't pay taxes for like six years of what? like when I became a musician because I just was completely irresponsible. And you had to catch up with it? Oh my God, yes. Yikes. Yes. Were you making a lot though? When I, like, it was weird. I, it was weird because I was like 21. I got like my first, you know, check from music. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was like my money. Yeah. I was just like, oh, cool. Like, I got money now. Because when you're working at a coffee shop, they do that shit for you. And I worked at Starbucks. So yeah. like, you know, it came out, you know, and then I went from Starbucks to hair school. And Why then don't they do that for like music? When I get my paycheck, why didn't they take out the taxes? I don't know. Yeah, because I'm the kind of guy where like, I want to know, like, all right, if I see something there, mm -hmm. that's what's going to st stick in my head. I don't like see something there, cut it in half and be like, okay, that's what I really I have. just always pretend like I don't have money and then I'm fine. That's, a good, that's how I live my life. That's a good, a good idea. Somebody commented that I live like a co uh, broke college student recently. And I was like, oh, true. That's fine though. Cause <laughs> my career ends tomorrow. I'm like square for a little bit, I guess. <laughs> it's a little comforting. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I made a lot of a lot of mistakes when I was younger, um, and now I'm not making those same mistakes. So you probably have a lot more fun though. Definitely. I feel like I don't have fun with my money. Oh, really? Not really, but there's nothing that I like. If I want to do something, I would. But I guess I'm sort of a boring person, so I don't know. I don't like if you were just like, what would you do with your money? I guess I wouldn't know what that is. Like, I don't care about like cars, so I wouldn't go buy a cool car and then drive it around. I'm very responsible like that. in that regard. I like do not, yeah. I, yeah, you know, but my thing is I get buyer's remorse on literally anything. Really? Like, yeah, I'll go buy a video game and be like, fuck, I shouldn't have bought that. I'm, yeah. not, gonna, I'm not gonna fucking play that that much. Yeah, like, I used to be really bad with that shit. Yeah, I'll buy clothes and be like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, your clothes are tight though. Thanks. <laughs> Yours are really cool, like good purchase. I wish I was stylish. It. What do you mean? You just go to a store and buy shit you like. No, I don't think it really works like that. I feel like girls, <laughs> I feel like it's so much easier for girls. Look what I'm wearing right now. Yeah, tight. <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, I mean, you want to know why? Because like, there's just, I just feel like there's more clothes for girls. But that's why it's so hard. I mm. feel like, because right now, okay. I, it's Too many essence, options? Yeah, like you're wearing cool jeans, cool shirt, and like sneakers. And like, you will pretty much always wear a variation of cool jeans, cool shirt, sneakers. That's so my new thing for this year is to kind of find a uniform. And just change out my shoes and just like kind of keep the same vibe. You know, yeah. one pair of black jeans, one pair of blue jeans. And that then, sounds like super less stressful. Yeah. But yeah, with girls, it's like, 
oh, well, do I want wide leg or tight leg? And there's also skirts and there's also leggings. Like I could have worn so many variations of things with this shirt. I could have wore high knee boots with it. I could have wore like just sneakers with shorts underneath. I could have wore tights with it. There's so many things you can do. And your jeans, shirt, shoes. Check. Yeah. My, go. We're complicated. <laughs> and now this hair is a nightmare for dressing yourself because I can't wear my clothes. It looks ridiculous. I, I couldn't wear like a pink sweater right now. Why? Because the two different colors? It's just real wild. Me in navy blue right now is so bad. Also, I'm so, I've never felt uglier in my life without makeup <laughs> than with this hair. With makeup, it's cool. But without makeup, the yellow pulls out the purple from under my eyes. It pulls out the redness from my blemishes, and my pimples. And I am the ugliest person alive. <laughs> what made you want to go that color? I just really like yellow and it's such a happy color and it's not something that you really see girls with. So, you know, everybody gets like, oh, let me go pink. Let me go purple. I just wanted to do something that nobody does. And you vlogged it. I did vlog it. Was that fun? Yeah. Cause yeah. like Breeze is my girl and like Ricky's a cool guy and people seem to like when I change my hair. So have you ever vlogged a date, like a first date? Only when I did a video called post dates where okay. I asked my po postmate to come up and eat dinner with me as a date. So I, I ordered dinner and then I was like, hey, want to eat? And then he came in and we ate. I filmed that. Was that weird? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Was he good looking? He was, he was, oh my God, actually funny story about him. Yeah, he was, he was pretty good looking, but he, um, <laughs> so somebody else did the same concept and they got the same postmate. Oh, no way. Hell? That dude thought he was in a fucking simulation. Dude, that, the, the sheer odds of that are so insane. And he went on the date? Twice? I don't remember if it was specifically a date, but it was something like I asked my postmate to do something. Did you text him like you're cheating on me? <laughs> no, I don't have a bad his, review. I only had his- His, his postmate's number? <laughs> right. He does his postmate's <laughs> number. But he FaceTimed during the date. I think it's in the video. He, pa he FaceTimed his friend. He's like, whoa, whoa, hold on one sec. Bro, I'm on the, doing this thing right now. There's this YouTuber. Yo, she can, as if I couldn't hear him. She gets millions of views. She's probably rich as fuck, bro. And I was sitting right there. No second date. <laughs> Don't come back. Yeah, we didn't have chemistry. What did uh, he deliver? What did you guys order? I love lemonade. Oh, okay. Like the uh, green bean salad, something. I think I got him like a sandwich and the green bean chicken pineapple sandwich. What if he was allergic too. to pineapple? Too bad, bro. I went through so many Postmates to get one who would do it because I got girls the first couple of times. Like I could have gone on a date with a girl, but I'm straight. So it wouldn't have been authentic. I needed it to be an actual date. So you just have a bunch of food like laying around your place? I don't remember actually. Oh. oh, you know what I did is the first girl brought me the food. And then after that, I had the guy bring me other things, but we ate the food That's from it. the previous orders. Yeah. So you're being resourceful with it. Yeah. So yeah. like if I needed something from like Ralph's, so I was like, Hey, like, and I gave him a grocery order and then I asked him to come and eat the, but we faked it a little bit so okay. that it would be funnier. It's like an assistant slash date slash butler. Yeah. Slash culinary. I wonder. Expert. Did you ever notice? No, I think that'd be weird. Like if we, like if we started dating, like would I expect him to go pick shit up for me? <laughs> Yo, dude. <laughs> that'd be wild. I, I asked for the salad. Do you think there's anyone who met on something like that? On Postmates? Yeah, like somebody for delivered sure. their food and they're just like, you're hot. For sure. Damn. Yes, good for them. I feel like, so. oh my God, I had, I had the weirdest experience like last week because I've never, have you ever ordered food and the guy came to deliver it and never went and picked up your food and is like looking at you just as confused as you are? What? Seriously, some dude showed up in my house after like two hours and I'm and like, he didn't have anything I'm starving. No, I'm starving, right? And so like I go outside because it kept getting pushed back. And so I go outside and he like looks at me. He's like, uh, he's like, where'd you order from? And I'm like, that's very strange. So -so, but here's the weirdest thing. He had the bag that from like the restaurant that looked like I ordered from in the backseat of his car. And I'm and like tried to give me someone else's food. I'm like, oh, no, no, I didn't order this, you know. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, no, 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 that's mine. And I'm like, OK, so where's so my shit? So he just kept your order because he, he wanted kept it? my order. Yeah, which, I think Postmates. Did you ever see, uh, I think it's called Vandal or American Vandal. Yes, it was yes. a Jimmy Thatcher yes, movie amazing, or a TV show. Amazing. I've seen both seasons. Anna Tyler Alvarez, who's the kid who's like making <laughs> yeah. the documentary. I had him on my Beats One show. He's hilarious. Dude, but that movie's so, or that TV show is so funny. But when he's eating the fries, he's like, I could eat the fries sometimes, but I can't eat too many. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was with Corinna the other day and she, or no, I was on FaceTime with her and she uh, ordered Postmates and she ordered a large Chick-fil-A fry and that shit was empty. That's oh, crazy. when it got there? That's so bold to eat that many fries. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> like half of the sauces are opened and shit. I want to talk. You should. 
we should start a show where we only have Postmates on and then we ask, oh my God, there's a Facebook group. Dude, hold on. No, let's do this. I just had a lot no. of thoughts. <laughs> Yo, it's the Postmates podcast. It's the- Post pod. Postcast. Post pod. Post, wait, no, there's something better there. Let's do this. Hold on. Postmates podcast. Oh, the Podmates. Pod Podmates. We got yes. there at the same time. Podmates. We, we got there at the same time. Do you guys want to do it here? We could we could do like a whole nother thing. Um, Cause there's right. gotta be some great stories. Dude. Like people like, like. But what happened? Here's, here's my thing. What happens if uh, I had one go to Barnes and Noble actually the other day and get me the, the uh, those two books that I'm reading right now. That's just so random. Like, cool. like order it on Amazon, you know? Well, I like, <laughs> I was like really feeling like studious. And so I didn't want to wait till next that. day. I wanted yeah. it. It was like 930 and I was like, hey. Am I the only person that genuinely enjoys running errands? You know, probably. Yeah. I I'm love that. Like yes. grocery shopping. Like I have free grocery delivery because I have Amazon Prime. Did you know you have free delivery with Amazon Prime? No. Yeah. You get free grocery delivery. If, I think from Sprouts, you just have to spend like over- $50 or something. Okay. But I love going to the grocery store. When I moved into my house, I would go to the gas station and the grocery store every single day. Just because you liked it? Just because I was like, oh, cool. I'm living in a new place. And like, I feel like, you know, done. Like, yeah. just like, I would like- Wait, what little, were you getting at the gas station? Um, Swishers, like bl oh, like blunts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and protein bars. Um, Cause they only had, they had like, you the You still didn't tell me the, the, um, the hardest drug you've done. Oh man. Or is that a secret? Like, do you oh, not talk about DMT. I don't know if I know. Is that a hallucinogen? It's like a psychedelic. I don't think I could ever do that. Yeah. That it was, it was, I was on tour uh, and I was like, I was 21. Was that a positive experience? Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't think I'd do it again. I did it once. Yeah. Um, I feel like my brain is too dark. I don't think I'd ever do a hallucinogen oh, because really? I think that I would see shit that I don't want to see. It'd be like a horror movie in real life. I already live. You start thinking about your, how your intestines and everything aren't connected. I can't talk about <laughs> you, that right now. Like <laughs> don't talk that. Don't. I can't. No. If, yeah. If I did a hallucinogen, I think I would see like demons, but I would be convinced that they were real. Okay. And I'm going into it that mindset. So I'm just never going to do it. Yeah. Definitely don't ever do that. Don't ever do it. No, no, no. You're not missing out. On no. <laughs> if that's going to be your experience. Yo, I had this weird experience last night where I woke up in the middle of the night and I was I don't know. I don't think it was sleep paralysis, but I was dreaming, but I was awake, but I could move my body, but I was definitely seeing shit. And I actually thought that I was going crazy last night. I'd never like seen shit, but I was like sleeping and dreaming. And then I woke up and I was still seeing the shit that I was dreaming, but I was moving my body. So it wasn't paralysis. Damn. Yeah. I don't know. The, but the closest thing I've had to that is I've like, this happened to me a couple of nights ago too, but as I was falling asleep, I like, <sighs> like jumped up and like gasped that. for air and Wait, like grabbed, recently no like this is like five days ago and like grab my nightstand and like grab my water bottle and was like Ugh. I keep waking up screaming <sighs> and I felt like yeah I felt like I don't know it wasn't like a falling thing but it was like I don't know I just felt like I couldn't breathe out of nowhere and like Weird. I was like falling asleep very peacefully and then just like got woken up violently that was like apnea I had a dream that a a baby turned into a demon and uh pounced at my neck and was eating my neck out. And then I was, I woke, up, <laughs> I woke up and I was going like this and I had taken like massive chunks out of my neck with my own fingernails because like I was trying to rip the baby off my neck Ugh. in my sleep. And then when I woke up, I was like bleeding and shit. It was wild. Damn. Yeah. I'm a violent sleeper. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why are you no. single Gap? <laughs> <laughs> How come the Postmates guy didn't chill? <laughs> just like, imagine being like, just started dating and I wake up screaming in bed. <laughs> like I've done it, dude. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. Holy shit. I've done it like multiple times. And what happened? Usually the guy will just be like, oh my God, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm just having a bad Because dream. it's like, it's like, you don't know each other like that well enough yet or yeah. what? He's like, he's like, no. Well, we're going to pretend like I wasn't in bed with somebody who I didn't know I didn't well mean it like that, for Gabby. this podcast. Uh, but yeah, it's like somebody who you don't really know that well and you're just like screaming. Well, I just think it's a very know. vulnerable thing, you know? Like, yeah. And so, yeah, you know, so it's just like with anxiety and shit too, people either get it or don't. For sure. And so like someone who's For never sure. experienced that will just look at you like you're a fucking weirdo. Yeah. Luckily I uh, date broken men. Okay. So <laughs> it's usually fine. <laughs> you can understand. Yeah. You like just, we're, we're like on the same level. Like it like turns him on. I'm screaming. He's like, you good, bro? <laughs> <laughs> you think that's foreplay? I think your problem is dating dudes that call you bro. True. 
That might be it. I call them sis though. Sis, okay. I'm like, what's up, sis? Oh my God, I was dating this guy. Um, and I would call him sis and he would like get so upset. Like, listen, I'm not threatening your masculinity. Like, I was gonna down. say, yeah, was was do you feel like you were like kind of like bashing him or what? No, it was just like he, he was like a, a like a sports guy. He was like, Don't call me sis. <laughs> Do you know how hard I can throw this ball? <laughs> True. You know how many touchdowns I've ran? Yeah. Are you good at sports? No. Uh, well, I played baseball and ice hockey. And then when I was 15, I was like, fuck this. I'm, I'm going to make music. Tight. So my dad played pro baseball. So uh, I failed him Who when I was a teenager. For? The Angels. Um, oh. And this is like a long, long time ago. Um, and then, yeah. So like, you know, and he's from Canada. So like I literally grew up like on ice skates before I could walk and like, like, like throwing, you know, and hitting baseballs like. All the, all the time. Um, and I was on like travel teams. I was on like fucking home teams. I played ice and roller hockey, like the full shebang. Damn. So by that time, and I was like, like, fuck that. I'm going to stretch my ears. And it, No, literally, I was like, fuck this. Like, I'm going to fucking Your pierce my ears. Your ears aren't stretched anymore, yeah? No, I had surgery. You have to sew them off. Cut, off. cut off my earlobes. Damn. Did you regret doing it? W uh, cutting them off or stretching them? No, stretching them. No, I stretched them out twice. I'd, I had them reconstructed twice. <laughs> Because <laughs> the first time I got hit in my ear and it ripped. Are you the type of guy who like breaks up with a girl and then gets back with her and then breaks up with a guy? No, and no, gets back no, with her? Oh no, 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 I'm, no, no, no. I, I, I'm like, like, if I once I break up with someone, that's it. Oh, it was just a joke because your ear. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> okay, I mean, cool. I could see, I could see where you got to that conclusion. Um, yeah, yeah. no, but yeah, I got hit in one of my ears, and so only one broke. Like, it like, psh. so then I had them. When like, you say broke, like split in half. Like, like, cause you know, when you have plugs, it's like this. So like someone we're it's not even a, it's not even like a cool story. I got hit in my ear and like his hand, his finger went into like my Did plug. he mean to hit you? Wait. And so it just like, it like broke and started bleeding and stuff. So I had to go, I, I had him like re-sewn up. Was it like very painful? No, not really. Cause it was um, so thin. Yeah. Cause it was, yeah, it was like thin. And then. You had big gauges in your Vans on video, I think. Yeah. 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 And then. That was after I restretched them out. That was after I restretched them out. So I closed them up to like half inch and then I restretched them out to like two inches. And then how had much those, is an ear surgery? Uh, I don't know. You don't remember? No. I I'm don't. so interested to know. Check this out. I didn't go to a real surgeon. I went to a tattoo <laughs> shop like on Melrose and like sat fuck? down and this dude is like a body modification artist. And that he makes like, sense. yeah. And he like took us like literally like I was like in, in a chair that looked very much Wait, like so this. you were awake. Yeah, is I was it, fucking awake. And did like- they numb it? It gives you, yeah, I got two shots. Uh, I got a shot in each ear. And then, you know, he took a scalpel and- Question. Yes. Why don't they numb you when you're getting piercings and tattoos? Good question. That just, it feels like you a can, simple- Well, you can get numbing spray for tattoos now. No, but like, give me a shot. Oh, really? See, I'm yeah. so scared of needle. Like, I can go get tattooed. I'm scared of, of getting shots. I just put out a YouTube video today where I had to get two shots in my ass. That makes no sense. I, that's what everybody says. And, like, the doctor yesterday, he's like, yo, you're going to do the eardrum thing? You know, we're going to. And I was like, no. And he's like, bro, you're fully tattooed. I'm like, it's not the same. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense because I feel like a tattoo is more aggressive. No, because it only goes on the first layer of your skin. Yeah, but it's all repeatedly for hours. What I think about with needles is like veins and like when, ugh, Yeah, uh, blood draws are pretty yep, fucking uh, bad. No, thank you. I'm not a big fan either. My sister, she, uh, flip, phlebotomy or whatever. Yeah. They, they learn how to draw blood. Yeah. Oh my God. That's where the word flowbots came from. <gasps> well, like the band, like those like the group? The musicians. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Or is it like, like I have a <laughs> Wait, flow? Was, no, I think their thing was like, we can rap. I don't think it's like, yo, we're bloody. <laughs> Where, no, I just thought like phlebotomy, but it also phlebotomy is spelled P-H-L-E-B. So never mind. Ignore everything I just said. Okay. Delete this from the podcast. <laughs> My sister used to come home and be like, hey, can I practice? And I'm like, uh, no. And she just used to like draw blood. For funsies? Like for my mom would like, you know, let her practice because she was a nurse and oh, stuff. Oh, that's like a loving thing to do. Yeah, To not let me. somebody practice not, drawing blood not from I. you. Not I. What if it was like your girlfriend and she was like- like that, No. Really? No, I'm not giving blood for nothing. I'm like horrible at just even going to the doctor and making sure like my vitamin levels are good. Like I'm not like volunteering blood for- Like Angelina Jolie and Billy Bob Thornton wearing vials of blood. Cool. Dude, that was bonkers that's as hell. That's really tight. Yeah. But like, yeah, you'd have- I don't know. I'd have to like- to be asleep and like to get my blood. I wonder what Angelina Jolie is like. I think about that a lot. Divorced. Wait, they're divorced? <laughs> yeah. Do you hear somebody laughing? Like that? <laughs> I, can, I can hear people laughing out there. <laughs> Very divorced. And that's just what she's like as a person. <laughs> no, I don't know. Divorced as hell. I, you know, it's crazy because- Wait, they like, got a divorce? Yeah. 
Do you remember when uh, Brad like posted this beautiful thing about like loving his wife through her darkness or something? No. Damn, that shit like did, touched me. Did he hit you here? It's like, oh, we love a fixer. Where's my Brad? Mm. <laughs> 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 Fix me. <laughs> Divorce is so scary, man. Yeah, that's why I'll probably never get married. You don't ever want to? I don't know. I, I'm i sure that eventually, like if you meet someone- that's, You're going to get suckered into it? Maybe. <laughs> so some dude out here is going to be like, come on. Maybe, but it's not one of those things where a lot of girls are like, I just really want to get married. It's just never really- struck me as something that excites me, I guess. Just go on Postmates. Oh. Postmates a husband. <laughs> Post dates. That would actually be a really funny dating app. Post dates? Post dates. Yeah, your date could bring you shit that you want, right? So it's like- yeah, it's and also in effective. your home and can murder you. Yo, oh fuck, I can't talk about it because I signed a contract. Damn it. I almost got sued because I talked about it on YouTube. Really? Yeah, and I really wish I could talk about it. Damn okay. it. Okay, well, thanks for I'm, thanks for bringing it up, I, Gabby. I, I've almost gotten sued so many times really? from YouTube. I've been sued yeah. a couple times. Did not, you, not from did YouTube. Did you lose? Huh? Did you I lose? Settled, settled. Oh, Ty, what'd you get sued for? Um, <laughs> I don't know if I can't talk about it either. Really? But you already settled. Oh, yeah. was that part of it? Yeah, yeah. I just think we just probably shouldn't. That sounds like a good story. I know. We'll talk about it later, I guess. <laughs> okay, when, when this podcast is off. Yeah, I've been threatened a few times. <laughs> uh, I definitely want to get married. I'm, I'm going to get married, um, and I want kids for sure. And what's cool is that my parents, uh, they've been married for 20, 30, 30 years. That's great. So yeah. I had like, yeah, it was, it was cool to see that. I mean, you know, and they've obviously had their ups and downs. Do you have like a, an age where you're like, oh, okay, I need to be married. How old are no, you? 29. And you don't have an age where you would want to? Um, no. No, nah, I feel like life never works out like that when you plan it. You, know <laughs> you I mean? should have just left it there. That's my motto. Life never works out. No, when you plan for, you know what's crazy? And I was thinking about this today. It's like the things that I have the most anxiety about, the things that I'm most scared of happening haven't happened. The things that like I'm scared of like hurting me the most haven't happened. And anything that's come into my life and been like, you know, awful or, or Really? Whatever, because I feel like my fears unexpected. always happen. Like really? my biggest fears are always, ex I'm, I think I manifest them though. Maybe that. Because I, I feel like I'm putting the energy into the universe. Mm. I hate that I believe that shit. I hate it. Cause I mean the secret and shit. Okay. That's bullshit. Okay. But like, that's essentially what I'm saying, but I don't mean it in the way that like the universe is going to give you what you're saying. I believe it in a way that like you bring that shit on yourself. Like what's a good example. Like if you're like a relationship, say I'm in love with this boy and I never want us to break up. And like, I, you're just so afraid of a breakup. Then you would manifest that energy of like, like that person can sense that you're like insecure. Well, yeah, you'd start doing things that would like- yeah. yeah, and then you would start questioning and then you would start behaving differently. So I believe that type of manifestation where I feel like your mood and your energy shows. Mm. And yeah, I feel like my biggest fears always come true. Damn. Yeah, I feel <laughs> Mine like never have to do with a relationship though. I never fuck. <laughs> the, the worst things that have happened to me have always come out of like left field. Like, dude, I, I don't know. I was- like super scared. Of, you got your ear ripped out. Yeah, no, exactly. Like, you know, or like, I'll be like worried about like my heartbeat and shit and then I'll get this crazy ear infection. Like something that I would have never thought about happening. Yeah, but that's also not like the end of the world. That's just like, damn, I got no, sick. Of course, but yeah. you know, just like shitty things. But like, like a bad thing. Like what's your biggest fear? You're- Dying. Hey. No, 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 you can't say dying. Oh that's no. That's so weak. Why? Because everybody's afraid of dying, I think. <laughs> right? Like nobody wants to die. Well- no, that's not true. But like for the most part, people like are like, damn, it's gonna suck to die. Give me like your, there's gotta be something deeper and more personal to you than just oh, dying. Oh man, wow. We're really getting it, getting it all out here on this pod. No, I really think dying. Really? Yeah. What is it that scares you about death? Just disappearing into nothingness and all of your thoughts, knowledge and art and memories disappearing into nothing? Yeah, <laughs> or like- the vast nothingness. Wow, I'm about to have an anxiety attack right now. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like Worms eating too your soon body. or like, it's like too soon. You so know? you're afraid of early death. You're afraid of not like fulfilling your potential. Maybe. Yeah. But then I see like really, really old people too. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I want to be like that. But I feel like once you get to that point, maybe you accept it a little bit more. Cause obviously when you think about death now, you're like, shit, I have so much to do. For sure. And one of my friends changed my perspective on that. Cause like I used to see really old, you know, I'd see like this cute old couple c crossing the street and I'd feel bad. Like I would feel so bad. And my homie's like, you know, I'm like actually the opposite. I'm like, what do you mean? And he's like, they've lived like their whole life. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Like they have so many experiences, like, you know, like they, they're, they're rich in life. And I'm like, damn, that's like a really good way. hundred percent. To look at it. Like a lot of older people have like, do not resuscitates. 
because they they're like ready. I think really? my, I'm pretty sure my grandma had one maybe, but like my grandma was 92 years old when she died. Mm. She was like, she died like gardening. You know what I mean? She had a full ass life and she near the end of her de- like life, she would literally talk about death as if it was just like, oh, well, like when I'm dead. And she said it so casually because she lived a whole life. She traveled the world. She, you know, found the man of her dreams and he died. And then she found another man of her dreams and she had all these grandchildren. It's like, well, what else is there to do? You just kind of Accept it at that point. But right now you're scared because you have so much you want to do. And I get that feeling too, because I feel like I went from like not caring that much about life and being sort of a dark place into, I was like so excited about what I was doing that I was afraid to die to the mm. point where I was like telling my producers, if I die, you have to release my music. Like you can't oh, be like, damn. you have to like, I was so paranoid about death because I was so excited. And I feel like there, you're somewhere in the middle of that. It's just like, shit, I, I got shit to do, man. Don't kill me. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I feel like, yeah, I, yeah. I just, I don't know. I love this shit. Living? <laughs> yeah. I like it. That is such a great, like, like you're just like, dude, I love life. That is so refreshing to see somebody who just loves life so much. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. I have bad days. Some you know? days you just want to <laughs> you know i went um i went skydiving and that for me was like this is a, this is a couple of years ago too but like when i was about to jump out of this helicopter i literally like said to myself like all right cool like if this is it this is it and i fucking front flipped out of it and Whoa. it was crazy it was like the best experience of my life and when i landed on the ground i was like i was like high on life and i felt invincible i had this dream I only lucid dream and I thought that everybody only lucid dreamed until I learned that they didn't. And then I had a not lucid dream and I, it was the scariest shit in my life. But um, I, in this like phase where I was like, oh my God, I don't want to die. Do you write shit on your hands so you can tell when you're dreaming? No. Have you heard about that? Do you do that? Like I used to be like super into lucid dreaming. Have you seen that movie Waking Life? No. Oh my God. No, but I always know when I'm dreaming. Oh, That's really? what lucid dreaming is. No, I know, but I, I trained myself so Whoa. I could like get into like that, like so I could like know. Like you can write shit on your palm, your, I mean, on, on your hand. You can stare at it for minutes before you fall asleep. And then if you notice, like one way you can tell you're dreaming, you can never tell time, right? In a dream. In, in a dream, like clocks and shit, they yeah. will never like display a time. When you walk into a room or a place, if a light is on, it won't like you, and you flip a switch, you can't turn it off, right? Lights will always is stay on. Is that universally true? Can we look this up? Because I feel like everybody's brain is probably a little bit different with probably that. Probably a little different. Like I think if you wanted to shut off, like if that was part of the dream. But the thing is like those tactics sound interesting to me just because I've literally never had a dream where I didn't know fully that I was dreaming. And I thought that everybody always knew that they were dreaming, except the one time that I didn't. But it was a plane crash. Light it, it's sorry dream. to cut you off, but it says, if you Lights can become crash. aware while still in your dream that you can't turn on a light slash can't flip on a light switch, this is a good embarkment point to begin lucid dreaming. Yeah, but I don't think that means that you can't turn off a light, right? I think that's just saying if that happens. Maybe Wait, no, brain. I see what you're saying. No, I see what you're saying. That's a way, that's like an indicator, you know what I mean? To know yeah, yeah, yeah. that you're dreaming. Well, I'll never or you just that. need to change your life <laughs> and you're awake. <laughs> so you intentionally lose a dream. Oh, wait, no, wait, let me tell you about my death yeah, dream because yeah, yeah. it was so fucking scary. So I was um, first not lucid dream I think I've ever had in my life. And I really thought that I was on a plane and it was going down. And in the dream, I was literally just like, oh my God, I'm literally going to die. This is the end of my life. These are the final moments of my life. And in the dream, I had to accept that I was done. And then everything that like your life just fucking disappears. Like death is so scary. You just are gone. And like people remember you, but you're just like, I mean, unless you believe in the afterlife, which, you know, I, th- I guess I do. <gasps> Never mind. That's a whole different tangent. Go it's ahead. a whole different podcast. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> anyway, talk about your lucid dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't done it forever. <laughs> if I was practicing it, I feel like I would only ever want to do that. But <clears throat> It's kind of exhausting though. You need to watch Waking Life because that movie's, it, it, I mean, and it's it's weird because it's it's shot like a real movie, but then it's animated over it. Hmm. And so like every part of the dream and like every kind of dream sequence it goes into, the animation changes. Tight. So it's like yeah. kind of like different like, you know, shades and hues and like weird like textures. Do you have a lot of nightmares? Um, Do you dream every night? I have no. a lot of questions. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Do you have, you don't have that many nightmares? I thought that was like really normal too. I have, I have crazy dreams where like uh, people are chasing me or like I have to fight a bunch of people. That's definitely an anxiety dream. Really? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'll go, like it's weird. Like I'll be in places and then like I got to like, yeah, like run, like I don't know, save someone or like, like yeah. run out of somewhere. Chasing and running and fighting. Those are all anxiety dreams. Teeth are anxiety dreams. 
if you ever have weird teeth things. Oh, I've only had one dream where like all my teeth fell out. That's an anxiety dream too. Yeah. yeah. Damn. But That's- I thought like death dreams were normal and I like talked about them so casually. Like I w- most nights I'm like swimming in a blood filled lake of body parts. Like that's like my dreams. That's just like, but like I know I'm like dreaming. Consistently? Pretty consistently. Oh my God. Yeah. But they're, they're, I could write a beautiful horror film, but I hate horror films, which is crazy because I see them that's every ironic. night. I know. I'm weird as fuck. And you like have a meeting at Blumhouse and just like, <laughs> just honestly, yeah. Bring your dream journal and just be like, all my, right, guys. My dreams though are so insanely specific in their metaphors though, where I can wake up and be like, oh, there was a baby and that was innocence. And then that salamander turned into a snake showing that there was something that I believed that was innocent and then t- ended up betraying me. And then the snake was trying to eat the baby. And like, I oh, can, shit. they're so specific. It's like, then I locked it in a box and I killed the innocence. Just dumb shit like that. Damn, I don't analyze my dreams at all. I just really? like, nah, I just kind of just wake oh, up you and should. go about my day. It's fun to kind of pick apart what your brain does subconsciously. And so you believe all that shit? I do because they're usually- I usually don't notice it until if I'm telling the dream to somebody else and then you kind of pick up like, oh, that's really directly coinciding with this thing that's happening in my life right now. Um, Like I had one dream where there was this guy that I was dating and I wasn't really like into him. I felt like he was really like holding me back and that kind of manifested in the dream as I was like being filmed and he kept like walking into the shot and I verbally said to him like, you're ruining the shot. And then I like woke up and I was talking about it and I was like, oh my God, like this guy's holding me back. Like I have to break up with him because he's ruining, and I'm not even trying to be like an actor, but it's like, this guy's ruining my shot at like life because I'm holding myself, you know? And you, and then you broke up with him? I mean, we broke up. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were like, I woke up, I looked over and I was like, hey man, you guys. No, I'm not great at breaking up people or breaking up with people. I'm very good at making people break up with me. So really? like, like if I don't like you anymore and I want it to be over, I have a really hard time just being like, Hey, it's not working out. But like, I'll like distance myself enough or something or like be like cold towards you. I'm working on it. <laughs> I just don't like to hurt people. Damn. I feel you. I can't hide, uh, when like, I can't hide my emotions very well. I can't either. But that's why it's like, I, will I don't know. That sounds kind of like, no, I, I can't hide my emotions, but I will not confront you. And that's why I'm good at ruining relationships because it's like- So you don't like confrontation. I don't like purposely doing something that's going to hurt someone, but I can't I can't hide my emotions. So like, if, if I don't like you anymore and I'm not happy with you anymore, you're going to read it all over me to a point where like, you don't want to be around me because it's obvious that I don't want to be around you. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not great. I haven't had a relationship for a while. I've been in therapy, so maybe in the future. <laughs> if you Don't watch da- this podcast. If you want to date me, like it might be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, damn. I feel like this, this, I've learned a lot about myself. Good. I've learned a lot about you <laughs> uh, over this hour. Um, thank you so much for coming. No, of course. I just ruined my dating life for the next 20 years. No, so. definitely not. Um, <laughs> I think I ruined, um, I don't know. Every, everyone's just hearing me talk about my ear infection. And now you're good. Just dying. everybody look out for uh, T Mills. Are you still going to buy T Mills no, musically? No, just, just Travis Mills. You'll be Travis Mills. I'll be, I'll be Travis Mills today. New music 2019? Um, possibly. No, 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 no. It's my no, favorite no. thing to be like, yeah, you know, maybe it's 2019, coming. 2019, it's coming. 2019. For sure. You know? Uh, Put your shit together. You know, new podcasts every Friday. Don't know about an album, but you know, you got the pods. Yo, we should really do the fucking, uh, post, I think it's po- great. Uh, pod mates. I would love that. Yeah, we got to do it ASAP because someone's going to watch this and fucking steal it. That's a concept. Let, right? me, let me talk to some people. Um, before we leave, I just want to give some shout outs uh, to the people who retweeted last week's podcast. Sexy. I know. I'm doing this. This, You know, I'm showing I'm showing some love. I'm showing some love right here. Hey. Um, let's see. I got to go to my little list. Oh, you have a list. I do. Um, I got to shout out Travis's food. This is an account that some, some fans made. And what they do is post pictures of me and- Edible items literally right next Tight. to it. So like, look, I'll show you. <laughs> it's, it's pretty funny. Like, is it you eating food or they just Photoshop them together? No, it's literally like, there's me. Uh-huh. Um, and then there's me as an iced coffee. That's just iced coffee. <laughs> um, there's me. Oh, Travis as food? I Travis, just spit oh, so much. Travis as food. Yeah, so here's me in a yellow hoodie. There's me as like a mango. Wow. Mango. Is that a mango? Uh, oh no, that's an orange. For sure not yeah. a mango. Yeah. <laughs> you know how I love my fruit. 
Um, yo, shout out Travis as food. Uh, shout out Chatty Man Dan. I've been seeing you retweet the podcast a lot, man. Shout out Livy Phillips. Shout out Nicole Belknap. Um, and I want to shout out Rachel TBFH. Thank you guys so much. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, subscribe, rate it, give me five stars. If you hey. hate it, give me one star, but really don't no, do don't that. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, don't don't do, do that. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe, throw us a thumbs up. Gabby, where can everyone check out all of your amazing content? Gabby Hanna everywhere. Definitely check out my music. I have a new song that I just recorded that'll be out within the next couple of weeks. Woo. I'm very excited about. And yeah, I mean, Google it, you'll find it. You have two channels and they're both popping. The vlogs channel? Yeah. Uh, I abandon it sometimes, but- Okay, it, we have like lives. four times the amount of subscribers there as me. So that don't, you're like, yeah, that that channel, that little one, that shitty <laughs> I one. Just, I just always forget it. No, no, no. I it, it's it's good. I just I don't post on it as much as I should. I like it. I, I watched like I went back and like watched a bunch of videos. Oh no, why? Because <laughs> they're cringy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much. We Thanks, gotta do Sean. this again. Definitely cool.